All right, so last week we looked at part one of the most common disagreements we've seen in the grace community. It was about our difference in understanding of election and predestination in regards to salvation. And so today we look at another non-essential and even bigger non-essential than last week's and it will focus on hell, right? All right, so there are two train of thoughts here. First one being hell is the final destination of the unbeliever. And here the unbeliever suffers forever, suffers for all time. The second thought is that hell is the final destination of the unbeliever where he or she suffers but the end result is death. And so unlike the first view where the guy suffers for all time, the second view says that there's an end to their suffering, where they perish or cease to exist. Now while we're on this, I wish to make it clear that uh, we do not believe in universalism or inclusionism. We don't believe that everyone is saved. The fact that we believe there is a hell and unbelievers go there, yeah, that's proof enough. Special thanks to Paul Ellis who had an article about this, actually called Conversations About Hell. So we're going to refer to that a lot. All right, so let's get into it. It's going to be one hell of a discussion, hell of a discussion, hell of a discussion, hell of a discussion. All right. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Billy and I'm the administrator of the Father's Love For You, online ministry that focuses on God's love for you. Right. So make sure to check us out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and whatever other social media there is. Also don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube, subscribe right now. So that's who I am. Back there is my assistant, her name is Minnie. And, and you know, we all need good assistance in our lives, believe it or not. We do need good assistance in our lives. Alright, on to serious business now. So the first train of thought in this non-essential, let me make it clear, it's a non-essential, right? So you don't have to break fellowship over this or you don't have to start calling each other names over this. Anyway, the first train of thought is the traditional view, which is, you know, human souls, our souls are immortal. Yeah, they live forever. And so that means we either live forever in heaven or in hell. And whether you think hell is a literal fire or just a place of darkness and whatever, my point is they suffer for all time, for millions of years till the end of time. And so we see here Pastor Ellis made a list consisting of hell as a place of eternal punishment and hell as a place of eternal destruction. And so let's look at some of the verses in the eternal punishment part. Yeah? Matthew 25, 46, speaking of the unbeliever, he says, This will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Next we see Mark 9, 43, 46, and it reads, If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than having your two hands to go into hell, into the unquenchable fire, where the worms do not die and the fire is not quenched. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than having your two feet to be cast into hell, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Another verse he mentions is Revelation 14, 10 to 11, and it says, He also will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger. And he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest day and night. Those who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Another verse I think Paul Ellis should have put here, but he didn't. You know, maybe in his bias he didn't. Who knows? But Revelation 20 verse 10 says, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So clearly you can see there are some verses that speak of hell as a place of eternal torment, eternal punishment, forever and ever. Hey, it is what it is. Anyway, so now let's look at that other side, the side that says hell is not forever.
so the second train of thought in this non-essential I repeat, it's an unessential, right? You don't have to start losing your mind over this. You don't have to start calling each other names over this. You don't have to break fellowship over this. It's an unessential. And so the second train of thought says that the unbeliever will suffer, but ultimately the wages of sin is death and not eternal existence. So they're suffering, but in the end, the unbeliever will die or cease to exist. And so if we look at the list, it looks as if Paul Ellis has a lot more verses on this compared to the other side. And so let's look at some of those verses. We'll start with, let's say, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. His argument is, when you look at the word perish in the Greek, is eternal destruction, cease to exist, annihilation, or whatever, right? That's what the word perish means. He uses a similar argument in John 10.28, where he says, God will give eternal life to them, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. A verse that seems to support his hypothesis directly is also Matthew 10, 28, which reads, Do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And so the body is destroyed and the soul is also destroyed. Now that can be seen in Second Peter 3, 7, But by his word the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. So complete destruction once again. Destruction of ungodly men. He also picks Revelation 15, 1, which reads, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels who had seven plagues, which are the last, because in them the wrath of God is finished. I think I was trying to say that God's wrath is finite, like it doesn't last forever, unlike his grace and mercy, which lasts forever, which endures forever. Finally, in Revelation 21, 8, he brings in the concept of you know the second death, and it reads, but for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all that, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And so the unbeliever will die again. And so he believes that the second death is the destruction of both the body and the soul. And so those are some of his arguments. And so I'll put some links to some of the articles. Yeah, you can check them out on your own free time. And also respect how he says that, you know, he may be wrong about this because he clearly leans one side. He clearly leans towards the side of complete destruction where they cease to exist rather than them being punished forever. At least we Christians agree on this, that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. So once again, these are non-essentials. Don't break fellowship over this. Instead, let's celebrate what we know. Let's celebrate the facts we have. Let's celebrate that we have forgiveness of sins. Sins of our past, present, and future are forgiven. Let's celebrate our freedom from the law of Moses, freedom from the law in general. Let's celebrate our new identity in Christ, that we are saints, not sinners, that we have a new and divine nature, an incorruptible seed, that we have eternal security, and nothing can separate us from the love of our Father. All right? And all this we know is received by grace through faith and the work of the cross. Yeah? It's not received by works but by believing in the finished work of Christ. So let's celebrate that. All right, so that's it for today's video. That's it from me. That's it from me, and uh, we'll see you next week, guys. Thanks for the support. Never take it for granted, and yeah. See you next week, my friends. Remain in grace. Remain in grace, my friends.